Making a life worth living in retirement with having is really about the people in our lives. It's about what we do. It's about what we say. It's about how we feel. It's about where we go. It's about who we talk to. But in truth, it's about five main things. It's about our talent. It's about our time. It's about our technology. It's about our tools. And it's about our treasure. See, usually people only talk about three of those areas, but I'm going to talk about them all because we live in a technological age. <clears throat> in terms of our talent, it's about the skill sets that we bring to the table and the ones, the ones that we can produce going forward based on the foundations that we already have. It's about our time because we all have time to manage. When I was in my life doing things really well, I kept a special day timer. I'm not sure that's the name of the brand that I chose, but it was a G or a 520 is usually what I liked because it allowed me to see my day by the hour from roughly 7 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night at least. I made my own pages to go a little longer because I had a lot of responsibilities not only for myself professionally and personally. I also didn't like the fact that they shortened Saturdays and Sundays in that booklet, but it was sort of hard to keep those pages all the time. But it was about deciding, how am I going to use my time right now? How am I using my time in this moment? What did I accomplish during that hour or 15 minutes? And openly, it allowed me to track my life. During the past few years of my life, I haven't utilized those tools because I don't have an office. I don't have a way to keep it. And someone has pretty much stolen most of those from my locker. You see, I had all those in my storage locker, and now they're all gone. As if someone went in and decided they would take them out to take over phone numbers for people, to call my contacts, to interfere in my life, or just thought they'd edit my property. No one had the right to do that. I was keeping those for my own business history. Someone might be borrowing them to produce a lie that they are my business, and that is untrue. They cannot produce that lie unless people are stupid enough to believe it. I am the sole single owner of Kanji Camp. I never had another employee's absolute truth. I utilized volunteers in every aspect of any other aspect of my life, and I did not pay them, but I might take them to lunch to thank them. Now, in life, we also have the aspect of technology. Technology is a fundamental requirement today for all human beings to produce a job or a career. When someone is interfered with in their technology, meaning we are paying for a technology, but someone in the law enforcement or someone in a company decides that despite the fact we're paying for these things, we're going to interfere with the person's rights to utilize it, that is actually theft. It is a monetary theft. When I lived in my last apartment complex and in the previous home, it was a town home, I was paying for my technology, but it wasn't always working fully as it should which is theft of my money for the services I thought I was to be receiving based on my payment and the agreements that were had at the time that I registered for service. Now, technology can also be shut off by other people who inappropriately use their own technology to get onto our technologies, to steal our lives, to interfere with our social media, to literally say, I'm going to shut you out of your phone system. And if you didn't remember your last password and you were just using the one, that you openly had through a normal means of doing it automatically and letting your passwords be automatically entered, you might not remember that password. If you just change your password, but you forgot to write it down, then you have a problem. If you're locked out of your emails because you can't pay a bill, it makes it difficult for you to recover those things. So technology is pretty vital in terms of not only our telephony, which is protected underneath federal trade commissions and FCC and other federal laws, our right to have free access without someone listening in is a pretty standard common thing since the Nixon era. But in reality, we also have other technology that we utilize to talk to people such as social media, email, fax, etc., Snapchat, whatever the new latest craze is. Those are utilized to communicate with other people, which is protected underneath freedom of speech and our First Amendment. Now, when I move forward into the next area and the next zone, which literally is our tools, these are the tools of our lives. These are our mechanical things. These are our automobiles that we own either as an individual or with our business practice. When a business practice owns a vehicle, it is pretty much not necessarily untouchable by the law, but they have to have a damn good reason to get into that business vehicle, to take that vehicle, to do a lot of things to that vehicle. And what I mean by that is when a door is locked, it's locked. 
If I've locked my car door, which most people have, then it is not someone's lawful right to unlock them. We have so many key fobs today that probably have similar coding that could lock or unlock our vehicles. I truly think that we have to go back to the more mechanical styles of electronic locks where it's on the door that we unlock the door because then we are physically right next to our car. We can see who's around our vehicle and whether or not it's safe or not to open our car door to allow ourselves access or whether we need to go back into a public space where we're around other people. Now that is an example of tools. We also have other tools. For example, I have leather belts and because I've lost weight and I've had these belts for roughly 20 years, I gave up one the other day, which was heartbreaking. But in truth, because I have lost all this weight, I had to produce new holes in my belt. I had a pouch in my car, in my vehicle of two or three, actually two uh, hole punchers. One came from my family. It was an heirloom of sorts. We had used as children to produce leather art. I loved that tool because of that. But I also, because I didn't remember having that tool, that's true, I bought two others over the course of time. <clears throat> the reality is that I had three, that is true. I had three. I had one that I bought when I was starting to lose weight and I forgot I had it and I bought another one. But those tools were in a pouch along with a large wrench because I sometimes couldn't get my oil cap off on my vehicle and that pouch went totally missing from my car. I didn't give anyone the lawful right to put their hands underneath my seat and steal that pouch of my tools. And if it shifted about to the point that I couldn't find it in the dark when I was unloading my car that was in impound, that's on me, but it went missing a long time before that. Someone stole those tools from me, things that I paid my own hard-earned dollars from selling books to buy, or other things, services that I produced to produce a life. Now, when we're talking about other aspects of toolage, we're talking, of course, about our computers that are our lawful purchase. We sort of have a problem in the technological world in that they are giving away our rights a little bit. They are creating strategic alliances and profitable partnerships by selling our rights to our tools, the physical apparatus and the hard drives and the brains of the computer, to software companies to put software automatically on our computers. Game software, solitaire, other things, which is a gift, but at some point somebody made and had to sell, and there's probably a profit back to that company because they have that on there. Now, for those of us who play solitaire on occasion just to kill time, it's fine. But there's other games they put on there like gems and, and castles, but eventually they time out and they require us to purchase more. If we simply got computers that had nothing on them except an operating system, then we could build our own software on the computer by purchasing software with the rights that we choose to give away to put the exact things we need on our computer on the computer so that we truly know what is on our computer. We truly know every stitch of software that's on there when we loaded it, what date we purchased it, and we have the receipts probably still attached to the boxes or the warranty cards that allows us to access those software pieces. In my life, I have purchased two pieces of software already that are supposed to give me the lifetime use of those pieces. But I still occasionally get pop-ups, would you like to buy the latest thing? And I like they do that because someday when I have a little more extra money, I might actually do that. I miss those days of CDs where I could load my own software or reload it if my computer failed. When I have to produce a password, I'm giving that information to the people who hacked my computer in the first place. Now, I have a computer that was lovingly purchased for me by my mother years ago. It is old. But I have lovingly taken care of it up to the point of this last year that when I slept in my own vehicle in a Kroger's parking lot on 116th Street, that twice someone got into my vehicle while I slept and broke the corners off of both ends of the back part of the computer. When I slept in my sister's home to stay out of the cold, which was a miracle in itself that I was even in her presence based on things she's done, there was a part of my computer that got broken in the middle of the night. It's not me doing it. It was sitting next to me on the bedside table, but part around the power cord got broken. As a part of the hazing and stalking in my life, someone stole my cord. And that was maybe four years ago. Also, someone stole another cord from me because I used an etcher to put my name on the cords that I had. I also had different types of 
um, what do you call it, glow-in-the-dark tape on my property. You see, in life, we have moments of time to tell the truth. And our tools are things that we purchase and we own. And it's no one's lawful right, not even a family member, to get on those tools without our consent or permission. It doesn't matter who paid for it. Once the gift is given, that exchange of opportunity is done. The property becomes ours, and it's our right to utilize it how we so fit, and no one else has the right to get on it for any reason whatsoever. Whether they're trying to prove that we're lawful or not lawful is not the point that they don't have the right to get on our property and monkey with it. What a malicious and ill-willed thing to do. Now, when we're talking about the latter part of the tease, when we're talking about the treasure that we have, the treasure is the resources that we produce. When I was a child, I literally babysat. I wasn't always a lot older than the kids I babysat for. The main thing was I was somewhat of a youngster. I think I was in the sixth grade or fifth grade when I started doing that job because it was a job that I could do. But I produced my own lunch money, literally, for most of my junior high through babysitting. My father very rarely gave me money for lunches in high school. Although as I got more involved in athletics and things, I had to have some money, so I'm sure folks paid for a lot of stuff. But I was taught to earn at a young age, which is good and bad in the generation which I was raised. It was good because it taught me how to manage money. It was bad because it gave me an indication of what my salary might be in the future based on my own parents' ability to produce a salary and a life for us on their lifestyle. Something I often talked about when I did some speaking in some local country communities of you have to look at where your family lives right now and what level of lifestyle they're at and decide whether or not you want to equal that lifestyle in your own adulthood or whether or not you want to go on further from that lifestyle in your own educational pursuits, your own access to society, your own social networks, your own ability to produce a job for yourself. One of my challenges of running a business is that most of my contacts were my service-oriented clients. Once a client times out, there's very little opportunity in the language opportunities of teaching to bring them back into the fold, especially for those who timed out because they moved off to college, they went to foreign countries, they moved out of state, etc. In marketing, it was always a if you produce a relationship and the person feels comfortable and they are willing to invest the amount that you offer them because you've prayed about it, you've decided what they can afford and what they can put on a card based on your idea of who they are, and they purchased from you, then you produced results. You met them, you gave them training, you helped them put together paperwork, you helped them make plans, but you're not the one getting paid to actually implement those things. Now, when I'm talking about treasure, what I mean is it's our hard-earned discretionary dollars that we're gaining. It's our revenue that we're generating. The challenge is that most people don't go to business school. And even in business school, they don't necessarily go through classes of how to actually manage a small business. They might have accounting classes, but that doesn't teach you how to manage the ins and outs of running a business, a small business. It doesn't teach you the tax brackets. It doesn't teach you all those things. I don't know what an MBA teaches exactly. But the reality is that I didn't have one of those. I have a different degree. I even have a minor in fine arts photography, which is why I know rule of thirds and I use a rule of thirds when I'm doing my own video. But my point is this, that our treasure is ours. It's no one else's. And our treasure also becomes our property. The things we acquire from our own investment of our own resources, our own discretionary dollars, not only in the community around us when we go out to eat and do things like I've done for years with the Starbucks or the Paneras or the places that I frequent on a regular basis in my own regular habits, which are good, bad, and indifferent, I suppose, to some people. But openly, it's also in the property that I own that I acquired through all the employment that I've had in my life, the production of revenue and resources that allowed me to acquire those things also are my treasure, my resources to utilize, to sell, to do what I choose with, not someone else. Now, when I talk about me, I'm really talking about you. I'm not talking about me to tell you my life story. I'm talking about me to get you to think on your life a little bit, if you care. But let's face it, most people do care about their own lives. They really do make plans, some people, or they just live in the day-to-day. -day. Part of homelessness, 
the thing that I've learned the most is that when I was super planned, I had a good life, but I wasn't necessarily enjoying every minute. In homelessness, I found all sorts of joys and things that I never thought of before in the simplicities of life, of what it's like to live with virtually nothing with you. It put in perspective what is important still for me in terms of value of my own treasure, but also what things I could donate to a church or a place that didn't have certain things. The problem is someone interfered with my right to donate certain things. The other problem is someone is going in my storage unit and moving shit about, getting it scratched and ruined. That's not their lawful right to do. It's illegal, it's immoral, and it is a vicious, hateful thing to do. To think that you have rights to someone's property through locked doors of any kind is immoral. Now, we've talked about the five T's. These are the realities of our worlds. These are the ways in which we produce life. These are the ways in which we go on vacation. These are the ways in which we pay for our children's needs. These are the ways in which we buy clothing for our bodies. These are the ways in which we produce rent for a home of some kind or a mortgage for one we want to own, God forbid, and we hope to God we get it paid off before we run out of the opportunity to produce an income to pay for it. Otherwise, we're selling it at a deficit. We literally know that cars lose their depreci and depreciate the minute they drive off a lot, which is why many of us prefer to buy a really good used car so we don't lose as much in its value. But openly, what we're talking about is our own rights to live our lives and produce our own health in the way in which we choose. Pardon me. Now, when I'm talking like this, I haven't said one thing about the heart, mind, and soul of an individual and how people are gifted things that are good. they are good at as a part of not only their talents and skills, but as a part of their treasures in which to enfold and encompass other people or provide philanthropically through service and customer service and their work to others. You see, that's what makes the human condition so unique compared to an animal. Animals do have souls. Animals do have spirits. Animals do have their own way of life and their own indigenous aspects of innate traits. We don't really know what language they have, but we've discovered dolphins talk, and we know that geese do, and we know there's a conversation going on there because the Lord God made it all. But when it comes to humans, we have people who violate our rights to be who we are, and that literally needs to stop. In our life, we've got the five T's to help us to produce the life worth living and our time worth having, but you know what? None of it can be done without the interaction with other human beings and what the monsters do, what the true stalkers do, what the true harm mongers do is isolate people, ruin their connections, take away their technology, steal their treasures, and literally defy their opportunities to utilize their talents to go further in life. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, we're coming up to an election year. We need a president who is both strong in will, but sound in soul. We need someone who is understanding of the laws of the world, as well as the laws of our nation. And we need someone who gets that they have no right to govern someone's soul, heart, mind. That's the type of president that we need. And openly, I'm hoping for one individual right now to make that leap. But we have to talk about things that are important to every human being. What's important to every human being's life to be able to produce a life worth living and retirement worth having is pretty straightforward and simple, regardless of all the places and challenges in the world that need our assistance, our love, our service, our money. The reality is we still have to produce a life for our own self, our own families that we choose whether they're families of origin, if they stayed intact and didn't become dysfunctional, or whether they're new families of people that we love to be with because they love our souls. Now, have you figured out where I've been? Have you gotten where I've come? Do you know where I'm going? The reality is that Lord God made it all, that the men and women, uh, the men and women of our land don't have the right to interfere with the plans the Lord has made to raise people up, to celebrate their souls, to give them all the resources and treasures they desire and can acquire based on their natural social relationships. 
that they produce through trials and tribulations, more teas, to get to a point that when they're old and gray, they will have loving partners in their life, family members who will worry if they're ill, family members that will bring food if they're sick, and family members that they choose to help them to slowly depart this world into the next. Now, this has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications, LLC, the author of Soul Keepers, The Soul Strings of Our Life, the writer of the film, The Dragon Priest, and others, saying thanks for listening.